Good morning. Today is Thursday, the 26th, and we're going to start with a daily reflection on the New Testament. Be not comforted, oh, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? Romans chapter 12, verse 2. As we make the supreme decision of life to follow Christ and surrender our will to him, we open ourselves to the cleansing and empowering presence of the Spirit of God by virtue of the blood of Jesus Christ and through the medium of the Holy Ghost, we are purified of worldliness and pride and are sanctified of all desires for sin. Further, our minds are transformed so that we so that we see what we ought to see. The call is for us to come unto Christ, who is the Holy One of Israel, and partake of his salvation and the power of his redemption. Yet come unto him and offer your whole souls as an offering unto him and continue in fasting and praying and endure to the end and as the Lord liveth, ye will be saved. <sighs> okay. Today is... My eyes will focus. Second Timothy chapters 1 and 2. Um... In First Timothy, uh, it's just the opening of his letter. Christ brings immortality and eternal life through the gospel. Be strong in the faith. And then in chapter 2, Christ gives eternal glory to the elect. Shun contention and seek godliness. Um, because chapter 1 is basically just the opening of his letter... I, I didn't really pick anything out. There was one that I could have picked for where was it? I don't know. It was talking something about soldiers. Yep, it's it's in chapter two, but I didn't pick that one. I liked that one, but I didn't pick that one. Um, verses three and four talk about being a soldier of Jesus Christ. In chapter two, but the one I picked was chapter two, verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly, di rightly dividing the word of truth. And my statement is just, I must study with the heart to show myself approved unto God, a workman unto him. Uh, to me, this is just uh, more devotion into my studies. Like, it's a habit to study. <laughs> we all saw I couldn't break that habit during my stressful early week. I still got up earlier so I could do my studying. It's a habit that if I stopped It would feel weird if I stopped. Like, how would I start my morning? That's weird. But is my heart and my soul in it? Am I devoted? Am I... Is it just studying? Or am I studying with my heart? Am I taking it in? Some days, not so much. Some days I really do. Some days I don't. Um, you know, some days it's like the minute I get up from this desk and I walk out that door... It's all about work, and I'm focused on work, and I'm thinking about work, and, you know. Anyways, that was my statement for today. And I need to put more devotion, more heart into my studies. My hair is a mess today. It's okay. It's bedhead. All right. So, we have Jeffrey for today which we love. Second Timothy chapter one. 
Many at home and abroad have been alarmed by international events and the almost wholesale use of the word terror. Quite, quite quite apt. Um, not many years ago, that word was reserved almost entirely for B-grade movie advertisements and Stephen King novels. Now, sadly, it is daily, f it is daily fare in our newspapers and so common in conversation that even young children are conscious that the word in which world in which we live can be brutally criminally affect uh, brutally criminally affected by people called terrorists and there are other disasters of other kinds natural and otherwise that remind us that life can be fragile that life can present fateful turns of events against that backdrop i know that many of you have wondered in your hearts what all of this means regarding the end of the world and your life in it. In recent times, I have heard very faithful and even dis... <coughs> Sorry. I have heard very fearful and even dis dismal opinions coming from young people, especially wondering whether there is any purpose in going on a mission or getting an education or planning for a career if the world we live in is going to be so uncertain. I have even heard sweethearts say we don't know whether we should get married in such uncertain times. Worst of all, I have heard reports of some newlyweds questioning whether they should bring children into a terror-filled world on the brink of latter-day cataclysms. May I tell you that, in a way, those kinds of attitudes worry me more than global pandemics and international terrorists worry me. We must never, in any age or circumstance, let fear and the father of fear, Satan himself, divert us from our faith and faithful living. As Paul told Timothy, God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. There have always been questions about the future. Every young person and every young couple in every era has had to walk by faith into what has always been some uncertainty, starting with Adam and Eve in those first tumultuous steps out of the Garden of Eden, but that is all right. This is the plan. It will be okay. Just be faithful. God is in charge. He knows your name. He knows your need. Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the first principle of the gospel. We must go forward. As, it's, as it says in K. Newell Daly's hymn, commemorating our pioneers of the past, with faith in every footstep, but like those pioneers, we do have to keep taking them, one step and then another and then the next. That is how tasks are accomplished. That is how goals are achieved. That is how frontiers are conquered. In more divine language, that is how worlds are created, and it is how your world will be created. God expects us to have enough faith and determination and enough trust in him to keep moving, keep living, keep rejoicing. In fact, he expects us not simply to face the future. That sounds pretty grim and stoic. He expects us to embrace and shape the future with power and love and a sound mind. To love it and rejoice in it and delight in your opportunities. God is anxiously waiting for the chance to answer our prayers and fulfill our dreams just as he always has but he can't if we don't pray and he can't if we don't dream in short he can't if we don't believe i love jeffrey i love him so much um that was a really good one what make me smile about that was, um, I bought a book for the study for next year because 
we've already been through when we finish this book this at the end of this year, we will already have been through it one and a half times. And I was like, I don't know if I want to keep going with these prayers. They're not necessarily I, I enjoy most of them. <laughs> Clearly, I enjoy most of them, but they're not our doctrine. And um, like I said, we've been through them one and a half times. So it's like, do we go through it a whole nother time? But I found a book uh, on Deseret, deseretbook.com, and it came yesterday. Uh, this one here, I don't know if you can read it. It says, A Year of Powerful Prayer, Getting Answers for Your Life Every Day, 365 Daily Readings. I was like, okay, well, you know, that gives us something to do every day. Um, however, it's not necessarily prayers written out that we've been reading, like we've been reading. It's just little, little, um, readings like uh like uh daily reflections but about prayer and so i was like i don't know if that's what i want to do like do i want to have start with a daily a daily reflection on the book of mormon and then do the book of mormon study and then end with a daily a daily reading on prayer i was like i don't know so while i was in bed last night before i fell asleep i like thumbed through it and i went like this and then I saw a short one and I would read it and then I'd flip through and find another short one and I'd read it and then I'd flip you know just to get a general sense of what it was like and if I wanted to do it next year anyway one of them was exactly what we just read not the whole thing but the last part when he's talking about prayer and how he's going to answer our prayers but not if we don't dream and so I think that may be Maybe the, the spirit confirming that this is what we need to do next year. If you've been with me for a long time, you know that I, I prayer's been a topic I've been trying to study out, to figure out, to improve, to make better. So maybe this is what we do next year. I'm thinking the spirit's telling me yes. You guys let me know if you want to do it. Um, I don't know if I want to... I think I want to end there. I don't want to get into chapter two in the verse by verse because I got to go to work. But I will leave you for, with a prayer from a diary of prayer. I do enjoy leaving with a prayer. I, I don't say amen at the end of them, so it's not really like a prayer. But I feel like I like leaving with a prayer. Anyways, uh, today's the 26th. And this one is a Jewish prayer. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who makest the bands of sheep of sleep to fall upon mine eyes and, and slumber upon my eyelids. Sorry. May it be thy will, O Lord my God and God of my fathers, to suffer me to lie down in peace and to let me ri rise up again in peace, if I could only read. Let not my thoughts trouble me, nor evil dreams, nor evil fancies, but let my rest be perfect before thee. O lighten my, my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death, for it is thou who givest light to the apple of the eye. Blessed art thou, O Lord, who givest light to the whole world in thy glory. All right. That was 2 Timothy chapters 1 and 2, and tomorrow we do 3 and 4. Tomorrow's Friday. All right, that's all for today. I love you all. Have a great day. Um, yeah. I'm going to go. Bye.